don't you ever raise your voice at me. I am your mother. So welcome back to filmmarriott.net for the latest entertainment news, reviews and interviews today. Boys on Film Return for their weekly Friday movie review. And all I have to say to tease this movie is... <laughs> <laughs> To be fair, Phil, you were doing that. I was doing it before. <laughs> before the film. <laughs> For different reasons, though. But now, you're doing it a lot more. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe this is Ari Aster's directorial debut. Well, no. feature, because he's done shorts before, but this is his first movie. What a stunt to have this be your very first feature film. Yeah. I was absolutely thrilled and scared and generally a bit shook yeah. <laughs> after, seeing the, after seeing Hereditary. When you say scared, I see this is the thing, with, with this film that's much hyped at the moment, people are kind of expecting it to be this generation's The Exorcist, which one critic has written in his review. Yeah, I've seen that a few times. I, d I don't think it is this generation's The Exorcist. I can see where they take, that you can maybe take a few elements of The Exorcist and kind of see how that ties into Hereditary, but, well, I think it's kind of like a little bit of poltergeist meets a little bit of the exorcist yeah. meets a lot of psychological horror. It had comparisons for me, more films like We Need to Talk About Kevin or maybe Kill List. I really, I really, really enjoyed it. I've got to say Tony Collette really is one of oh, the standouts. Wow. Oh wow, she's absolutely amazing in this film. Because it's a performance that I think is really difficult because you've got to use your face as a lot of expressions that you use, I think you've got to really pull it off as being genuine. You okay, Mom? What? Is there something on your mind? Is there something on your mind? Yeah, for me it was definitely a bit of a journey. I remember feeling in the cinema like, Oh my god, after the first hour, it felt kind of slow, yeah. and a little bit slow paced. And that's really the only criticism I have about that film. Um, but, I mean, once it gets to the payoff, and once the, the dots start being connected, it's like, whoa! There are generally a few, like, jump out of your seat moments, and, you know, you aren't expecting it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm a massive horror fan. You're a horror fan as well. I think yeah. we, we, we tend to have different horror films maybe that are our favorites you're a big big horror fan i'm like the occasional enjoy horror movie <laughs> type of fan <laughs> See, i'm quite hardened by them because i grew up on horror films from an early age so I, I was watching films like psycho and halloween and all the traditionals and a lot of really gory stuff too i mean this isn't no i was gonna say it's not gory but actually it is there's quite a lot of nasty moments in this movie. I wouldn't say Hereditary is gory by any means. It's definitely, there's a few shocking scenes, and there's a few scenes that are like, ooh. I mean, but I wouldn't consider it gory. Well, well now moments. that I think of it, now that I rethink about it again, yeah. there's the ants, and yeah, there's a few gory. There's you can't a say few, any more than that. Yeah, there's a, there's a few gory scenes, but it's nothing like, you know, saw or hostile no, no, or no, anything no. like that not gratuitous yeah. i think it needs to be there those moments need to be there yeah, to really definitely. tell the tell the story as a hardened horror fan uh, i was shocked by a few of the moments and they're moments that really have stayed with me as well because there's certain there's certain horror films and i think it's a real it's a real job today for directors that do horror films to really pull it off because I think now people are so, they're so bored by a lot of modern horror films and this, this film is certainly not boring and it does pull a few surprises, like I say, but I think he pulls it off the director. I think he, he does few, you know, he puts, puts a few new tricks in there that really, do, you know, are surprising. And technically the film is quite superb, like the camera angles and the crispness. It's good to the, watch, isn't it? It's a nice depth, film to watch. Like technically, I mean, you can probably tell that, you know, he's applying all, everything he learned out of film school and, you know, from doing his short films that he's done before into this, and this mighty new beast called Hereditary. But, um, it's a beautiful film to watch. I was quite captivated and, you know, I felt like, oh, wow, it's pleasing on the eye. And yeah, I would agree. Tony Collette plays the mother. She plays Annie, Annie Graham. Gabriel Byrne, who, of course, is a really established actor. He plays the, the father. I wasn't actually sure if he was Irish in the movie because he's obviously in an American family. 
I wasn't sure if he was meant to be an Irish Irish character because he does slip into the Irish accent a couple of times. Well, I, f- <laughs> I have uh, saw in a few other reviews about the movie that like, oh, Gabriel kind of gave up on his accent. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the movie. So maybe, I don't know, maybe he was having a bad day on set or something. I didn't personally actually notice it as much no. as you did, but... Little things um, like that do I, bother me, but it's a minor, it's a minor quibble. He, he played the part brilliantly. Tony Collette, fantastic. The daughter... Who, ch- who plays Charlie, Millie Shapiro. I, I don't think she's done much. I think she was in the musical Matilda. Well, this is definitely her shining moment. I'm, she's actually doing a lot of interviews around this movie, and what a smart little girl and she is. And what a face. She's got yeah. one of those really distinctive faces, and it's really bizarre. I think it was you that said to me when you pointed on the poster, she really does look like Tony Collette as well. When you put the two faces together... You could see, like, it's the young version of Tony Collette. Yeah. And, you know, and, like, you can... Act actually see that transition so brilliant casting there and it's charlie that does the yeah <laughs> she's got this really uh, well some might say annoying my partner said it was annoying um habit of making these noises she collects kind of little trophies is it a spoiler i don't know if it's a spoiler there's a moment where a bird flies it's in the trailer yeah the bird flies into the window and she she cuts the head off, but she's collecting things. And you'll find out why in the movie, why she collects things. Yeah. During the first hour of the movie, you're like, but why? Why is she doing that? What's going on? And then, and then you it all that. starts to come together. At the end. <laughs> it's like, whoa. It reminded me a bit of the movie Mother. Have you seen Mother? Oh, God, Phil, I'm going to totally disagree with you there. Oh, really? It is, has, does not feel like Mother at all. Like, because it goes quite crazy. It goes nuts towards the end. It not on a of... Mother level. <laughs> and Mother really stayed with me, too. It, it's a film that I keep thinking of. It's got these memorable scenes that are really unique. Yeah, I just like, well, anything that Darren Aronofsky does, I always feel a bit like... Like it grates on your nerves and it's too OTT right. and a bit too much. And that's exactly the way I left Mother. But Did you think the tone was very similar though? I thought the tone was... Mm, no, no, I don't get that. Maybe for you, you get that. Yeah. I, uh, maybe I don't with this film. I felt the tone is very subdued, um, but just it does get under your skin. It was haunting. Yeah. Um, you, you mentioned that you were scared by it. I don't think I was scared by it. Different things scare different people. For me, scares are more to do with being scared by the psychology of a film rather than something that you see. Because I think if you see too much, I think that's not going to be scary to no, me. If to, when I, and what I judge scares by is that feeling like, oh my God, something's going to happen. Something's going to happen. Look at the way they're setting up that shot. Yeah. Oh my God, something's going to pop out. And that's when like the adrenaline starts to run. And then in this movie, a simple thing like, Will make you yeah. jump out of your it's seat. Quite unnerving, yeah. isn't it? I mean, there are plenty of moments that really unnerved me, and um, particularly the last, the last twenty minutes. I think it did drag a little bit in the middle, like you say, it was quite slow. I didn't mind the slow pace to begin with because there was enough going on, and there was also another shocker that happened in the first 20, 30 minutes of the movie that I wasn't expecting. Yeah, Can't say what that I, is, to, you know I, what I, I mean. know what you're talking about. I definitely agree with you there. I was like, oh, they did that. That's and it kind really of sticks with me. you throughout the movie too. It yeah. become, becomes an underlying sort of subplot through the movie. But interestingly enough, you being the big Halloween fan, yeah. you know, the thing about Halloween that scares the bejesus out of me is just like in broad daylight, there's Michael Myers is sitting in the schoolyard. I agree, you know? completely And agree. then there's a few moments in this film where it's just a person is there and you'll just jump out of your seat, you know? You know what I'm talking about. I know exactly what you're talking, <laughs> what you're talking about because I think it's what you're not expecting because a lot of horror films do do the, the expected. They rely on the, the usual horror tropes, which I, I think become really boring now because they've all been done before. Yeah. This, you know, I think it pays tribute to a lot of other horror films and it does use those tropes, but it, it uses them in a, in a really unique way, I think. You know what? I really like Tony Collette doing horror. I don't know if you I remember uh, the remake of Fright Night where Tony Collette plays the mother in yeah. that, which she was amazing in. Yeah, she she really is good at this horror thing, and I really hope that you know this being maybe her third horror film that actually she doesn't get overlooked for her performance because there are some things that Tony Collette does that you're just like, wow, girl. I was not <laughs> wow. expecting what she does towards the end. That was that was a shocker for yeah. me. That felt. I mean, I've got goosebumps just thinking about that because you don't expect. Tony Collette to do those kind of things. It's really difficult to talk about this movie because I think the less you know about it beforehand, the better. Because if you go into it not knowing Absolutely. a thing, 
you're going to be more scared by it, I think, or more, or you're going to feel unnerved. Absolutely. By it. And what you see in the trailer is not the movie you're going to get either. No, like, no I feel that's like true. completely like the trailer does show you a lot of things, but that is not the story that you think you're getting into. So I think that's why it made it a bit more scary for me. Yeah, it's quite a long movie. It's 127 minutes, which for some people might be too much, especially if they don't like horror films and you go into it and you've got to sit through over two two hours of something. Mm. It's it's grueling. And can we talk about Alex Wolf too, who plays the son in the movie? He's Outstanding good. performance. Uh, I think he's another sort of you know it actor on the rise. Isn't he in My Friend Dahmer? Yeah, so he plays Jeffrey Dahmer's best friend in My Friend Dahmer. So uh, another great performance there. So another actor to look out for. But he is just fantastic in this role. Very plays a very pertinent role in in the film. I think it's a difficult role to play that he plays. I mean, I think all the roles are difficult because they go yeah. through so so much tor- torment and torture it's it's a difficult thing to, to play if, I think if you're an actor and it's a real challenge I think then I'm probably I would imagine they're glad they did it now can we just speculate a little bit do you think Hereditary holds itself up to be a universe because there's so many like little different side stories you could tell based off Hereditary like the Conjuring universe the thing that everyone's afraid of in this movie is like a an organization of people. With and sequels, you mean? You think there's going to be a continuation of it? Yeah, I mean, with uh, with Hereditary, you know, could they dive a bit more into the cults and, you know, Anne Dowd's character? Maybe. and Oh, we didn't mention Anne Dowd. Yeah. She plays <laughs> Joan, or Joni, who's the friend, who becomes a friend of, of Tony Collette's character. I absolutely love the scene where Joan is overjoyed. <laughs> In the about, car park. Yeah, about her newfound... Uh, <laughs> You know, thing I can't even tell you. What no, it is, I know that's the problem. Isn't she's it? basically talking like a crazy talk, basically yeah. about how she's found a solution to her grief. And Tony Collette, you can just watch her face. She's like, I don't know about that bitch, but I don't know. <laughs> <Totally awkward. laughs> and then she ends up going along with it, and you, and then I'm like thinking back. I'm like, she was playing you. She was totally acting in the movie towards you know to try to get her to go along with the master plan yeah it's freaking creepy it's really creepy <laughs> and it's that kind of thing that really creeps me out it did get under my skin i left feeling quite anxious after seeing this I, and it doesn't happen very often because i'm so hardened by horror films yeah i was definitely shook <laughs> as they say <laughs> i felt a bit like unnerved i felt anxious as well i'm you weren't um, sitting in a D-box seat, were you? <laughs> 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 <I'm like> <laughs> I was just like, I had to go home and sleep alone by myself that night. And I was like, don't think about the movie. Don't think about the movie. I but was seeing things at home. There's uh, elements of the movie, there's scenes in the movie that you can't get out of your head. I can't even say what it is, but it's something that happens at night in a room. Yeah. And I just had visions, like the visions in the in the film. Yes, it is very similar to old horror films. So I, I don't think it's a classic by any means, but I think it is a memorable horror film. And I think in this day and age, I think it's a good one. I totally agree with you there. Um, I'm hoping it becomes a classic. I'd like to see it again. I'm definitely going to see it again. And it's the only movie that I can actually say that this year I want to see again. Can I just, hope it becomes a classic. Yeah, I, I, th- I think it will. People are going to be talking about it. So star rating. It's going to be a four for me. It's a five for me. You're going to have a five I'm star rating? I'm giving it a five star rating. I absolutely love this film. I can't wait to see it again. I can't wait for other people to see it again so we can open conversations and conspiracy theories about I'm about really film. shocked. I think that's the big shocker today is that you've <laughs> given it a five star rating. You've almost said that that is your ultimate film of the my, year. Yeah, my only, my only quibble is it, it felt a little slow in the beginning, but the only like thing I can pick at this film. Interesting. Very interesting, Raj Rudolph. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you've seen the film, let us know. Uh, give us a comment below. Don't forget to like and share this content and we'll see you on the next video. Thank you for watching.